Memory and history are broad fields of study. Memory has been studied by psychologists, sociologists, and historians, among others. History itself is too important to be left to historians. Archaeologists, archivists, anthropologists, legal scholars, political scientists, and many more took an interest in it. The crossroads between memory and history is busy. Here it is watched from a particular angle, Eurocleo's observation post. What is memory? The historical aspect of memory is undeniable, yet memory differs from history in at least four aspects. Time span. Memory is a short but constant flow, in the sense that it deals with the past that still lives or is capable of living in the consciousness of the groups keeping the memory alive. Halbwachs, 1992, page 82. The memory of a group extends as long as the group maintaining it. On the other hand, history is divided into periods, assembling personal stories into broader, more abstract trends. Moreover, the time frame is much longer in the case of history than it is in the case of memory, as history collects the most notable facts of the past to create a global overview of events, from as far as one wants, also beyond the time horizon of social groups that are alive now. Selection bias. History combines facts which are selected, combined, and evaluated in accord with values and rules that are in favor of certain groups, often those who survived, triumphed, and are in power. In contrast, a group's memory suffers from other types of bias. It is prone to emotions, and thus likewise distorted. Unity. History tends to be universalizing. Its statements aim at being valid all over the globe whereas memory tends to be particularizing. Its statements aim at being valid within the group that holds it. Collective memory is unthinkable without a group that supports it. Emotions. History is interested in facts and interpretations based on them. It does not take the impressions and recollections that are created in the lived experience of a group for granted, but still wants to study them as a subject. History aspires to be, among others, a coherent narrative of all the collective and historical memories of disappeared groups that can no longer express themselves. History collects the facts to create a continuity between past and present. Past events can be gathered in a single and unitary record as history by separating them from the bias of memory and only keeping the chronological and spatial outlines of those events. In short, history is cognition-oriented, it wants to produce knowledge about the past, whereas memory is affection-oriented. Its emphasis is not on completeness, but on selected crucial events through which the group is formed. There are two main types of memory, individual and collective memory. Individual memory is an individual faculty that is capable of recollecting previous experiences of oneself and of others. It is independent from others and from the social and historical locations. These memories are created by individuals first and can be shared with a group later as part of social interaction. Counterintuitively, collective memory is not the sum or combination of individual remembrances. It is rather a framework that helps individuals situate their own recollections of the past in relation to those of others. This framework helps individuals put their own memory into perspective and into a larger context. It therefore may enhance understanding of the flow of time. In fact, some individual memories are sometimes only recalled once other members of the group share their own versions of an event. The collective memory is the remembrance of an event by a group which has lived through that event. The group that lives through and then remembers an experience in a recordable way is a primary source of information for narratives on that event. In conclusion, what is memory? Memory shapes the context in which individuals perform the acts of reflecting and analyzing ideas and ideals.